Hello, welcome to Slackwood Presbyterian Church. On this July, uh, January 3rd, I want to wish you a Happy New Year's. We're glad that you are with us. I want to bring a couple announcements to your attention. Know that Carol does a great job every Saturday evening of sending you not only the links for worship and adult forum, uh, but also the announcements and things that are coming up for this week. Just want to highlight the partnership that we have entered into with Slackwood Elementary. We are working to provide for vulnerable families that are in our neighborhood through our elementary school and want to thank you for the Christmas offering. Continue to bring and send those Christmas offerings our direction and that will go directly towards uh, providing for families that are in need. The other thing that we can do as we enter into what would normally be our Martin Luther King service project is we can donate. We can donate uh, gift cards, we can donate essential supplies to make sure that as you are dropping those off directly to Slackwood Elementary School uh, Monday through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. that that will go directly towards providing to families that are in need during this difficult time. Want to encourage you to have your bulletin ready as we now enter our hearts and minds through our call to worship. Please join me as printed in your bulletin. Sing praise to God who gathers together even though we remain physically apart. From different homes and neighborhoods we come. With a word of promise, a spring of water, a loaf of bread, and a cup of juice. God turns our mourning into dancing, our sorrow into joy. As we enter into a new year, fill us with hope, hope that comes from you alone. Let us worship God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. Let us pray. Emmanuel, you are God with us. You are our heart's delight. Because of your amazing love, you came to earth and you became one of us. You reached out to us while we were lost. You rescued us from death. You brought us salvation. Your love is so high and wide and deep that it and only it could reach the suffering world. You came to bring an end to our sadness and to dry our tears and to still our fears and to give us hope. And so we praise you. We praise you for your word. May it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Help us today to hear and trust in the promises that you have for us. We pray this in your Son's name. Amen. Raise a song of gladness, peoples of the earth. Christ has come, bringing peace, joy to every heart. Alleluia, alleluia. Joy to every heart. Alleluia, alleluia. Joy to every heart. You beloved all on the stero. Servite domino in Letitia. Scripture tells us that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Truly all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And before we can recognize the miracle of grace that God offers in Christ, we must first recognize our need for that grace. Please join me in a prayer of confession. O oh God, you cre create and sustain all things by your word. Your love is manifest throughout all your good creation. Indeed, your word became flesh and dwelt among us so that we might see, hear, and know you in ways never before possible. But we do not always trust in that revelation and in your sustaining power. 
We sometimes doubt that your abundant love will overcome hatred in our world. Forgive our disbelief. Have mercy upon us for our failure to abide in Christ and to walk in his light. We now enter into a time of silent confession. Amen. Hear the good news. Surely all are forgiven in Christ Jesus, that God has removed our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west. There is forgiveness and reconciliation in Jesus Christ by God. Amen. One of the common mistakes that is made in the sports world is whenever athletes or coaches, they use war combat terminology to describe what's taking place on the athletic field. When phrases like going to war or live fire are used, it disregards the real danger that our soldiers have found themselves in for centuries. Very rarely do athletes die in competition. And now the same can't be said for war. And the level of sacrifice that is made by our soldiers far outweighs the sacrifices of our athletes and our coaches. So that kind of terminology is both misguided and it's inappropriate. Now every week, pastors enter into the pulpit, but even before that, as they are preparing their sermon, they're finding, trying to find just the right sermon illustration. 
Something that will bring the scripture passage to life. Something that will convey a clear message in a powerful way. Now, I don't think I've ever used war or combat as a sermon sermon illustration that until today. But millions have already died around the planet because of this invisible enemy that we call COVID-19. And so I have chosen to use warfare and combat as today's illustration. But I want you to know this. I don't do this lightly or carelessly. I'm going to try my absolute best to do it cautiously and hopefully sparingly. But I can't find a better way to express and share what I want to share with you today. We have a text today where the nation of Judah has been carried off by a foreign power. For decades now, they've been living in exile in the land of their enemies. Their normal way of life has been completely cut off. And so they are isolated, they are struggling, they are in unfamiliar territory. Does that sound familiar to you? I think in a way, this pandemic has placed our lives in exile. Think about it. Think about this past week, this last Christmas and New Year's, where we probably were not celebrating with as many family and friends as we normally do. We were not in large crowds on New Year's Eve celebrating in ways that we normally do. And why? Because we are making sacrifices. We are watching too many people that we know and love get sick of COVID. My guess is that each one of us knows someone who either is sick or has been sick from COVID. Too many of us know somebody that have already died from it. And because of this, we are hunkered down. And now, here's where I'm going to be mixing my metaphors. Yes, we are living in exile, but it also feels like we are trapped in a bunker. And that surrounding that bunker is a COVID minefield. Whenever I go out in public or at a store or a grocery store, that's honestly how I feel. How are you feeling right now? You feeling weary? Feeling worn down? Being isolated? I am. And so that's our reality. Let's now enter into this scripture Jeremiah 31, 7 through 14, our lectionary passage for today. Here, Jeremiah is God's prophet, God's very own mouthpiece, and he is speaking a special word to people that are living in exile. Now, this is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Israel. Shout for the greatest of nations. Shout out with praise and joy. Save your people, O Lord. The remnant of Israel, for I will bring them from the north and from the distant corners of the earth. I will not forget the blind and lame, the expectant mothers and women in labor. A great company will return. Tears of joy will stream down their faces, and I will lead them home with great care. They will not walk, they will walk beside quiet streams, and on smooth paths they will not stumble. For I am Israel's father, and Ephraim is my oldest child. Listen to the message from the Lord, you nations of the world. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. The Lord who scattered his people will gather them and watch over them as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Israel from those too strong for them. They will come home and sing songs of joy on the heights of Jerusalem. They will be radiant because of the Lord's good gifts and abundant crops of grain and new wine and olive oil and the healthy flocks and herds. Their life will be like a watered garden and all their sorrows will be gone. The young women will dance for joy and the men, old and young, will join in the celebration. I will return their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and exchange their sorrow for rejoicing. The priests will enjoy abundance, and my people will feast on my good gifts. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The first question that we have before us is this. Is this message, this redemption message, is it only for the nation of Israel? Or through the power of Holy Scripture and by the gift of the Holy Spirit, is this message of deliverance also meant for you and I today? Yes, we are living in this bunker, but if this message is for us, then it would be akin to a communication soldier that is in that bunker with us and over that transmitter receives the good news that the cavalry is coming, that the chopper has our coordinates and is coming our way. Hope is on the way. Help is on the way. Because God cares for us, because God understands what we are going through, God is coming to us. And God will rescue us and save us. Now, aren't those amazing words to hear? I think so. Frankly, I don't think there's any better news that we could possibly hear than this. If this message is for us, For if we believe that just as God rescued his people from exile in Babylon thousands of years ago, that God too will rescue humanity from this pandemic. That's not only good news, that's great news. So how are we to take this news? It's 2021. We're in the new year. Is this saying that everything is over and that we have been rescued? Absolutely not. No way. If there was ever a time where I would use profanity in a sermon to make sure that I get this message across, it would be right now. We are not to get out of our bunkers and start running around this COVID-19 minefield. Our hope does not come from us getting ourselves out of this terrible circumstance. So what are we to do? We are to stay in our bunker. We are to listen or read one more book. We are to watch one more show on Netflix. In the new year, we have the opportunity to dust off some of that uh, exercise equipment that's laying around the house and put it to good use. We can continue to try to spend quality time with our spouse and with our children and with our grandchildren. Every other night, we have the opportunity now to watch my first place 76ers play. Or you can watch your favorite team. Today, watch your Eagles or your Patriots or your Giants or your Jets for one last time before your season is over. Now, the good news that we have before us is this. That the hope we have right now, it doesn't come from us or what we need to do. It comes from Jesus Christ, the one who saves and heals and loves and cares and protects and provides. Now, how does he do this in 2021? First is through prayer, knowing that we can turn to God and we can talk to God about anything and everything that we are going through and to know that God is listening. And as we pray We shouldn't be the one doing all the talking. There is a time in prayer for us to listen to what God is saying back to us. Words of reassurance. Words that provide us with the perseverance that we need to just hang in there. Words that provide us with the patience we need to deal with that certain person or to deal with that certain situation that we are struggling with. How else do we know that God is coming to our rescue. Well, have you ever wondered who our modern-day prophets are? Who's God's mouthpiece right now? Who's our modern-day Jeremiah? I think it's our scientists. I think it's our experts and our researchers and our pharmaceutical companies that have been working on these vaccines. God has given them bright minds And they have studied for years and years pandemics and what the proper response should be. And so God is allowing them to use their gifts and expertise to create a safe and effective vaccine in record time. 
So let us keep listening to the words of our modern day prophets whose instructions and guidelines are there to help save and protect as many lives as possible. And that includes yours and mine. Forget all the hogwash that says science versus religion. Those are false prophets speaking. Right now we need to listen to God's true prophets to do what they say And when your turn comes for you to get that vaccine, you take it so that we can all safely achieve herd immunity and we can move on to whatever new normal is for us. Now let's come back to this foxhole. There might be others in that foxhole around you that says, I can't take it anymore. I'm going to make a run for it. Come with me. We'll be fine. How many of you have seen enough war movies to know about that stir-crazy soldier that decides to take off on his own? It normally doesn't end up very well for him, does it? Don't follow his lead. He's just another false prophet. No, as hard as it is, stay in your bunker. Keep wearing those masks. Stay socially distant. Keep your points of contact to an absolute minimum. Now I know that live stream and pre-recorded worship is not nearly the same as being in this sanctuary together. I get it. But when we trust our experts who say it's simply not safe for us to sing and to congregate indoors in a sanctuary this size, we're trusting in God. I know you are tired and weary, and frustrated, and angry. But continuing to follow what the experts say to do, we are also trusting in God. We are living faithfully as God desires for us to live in this time and place. By staying put and staying safe and making the necessary sacrifices, we are listening to God's modern-day prophets. We are trusting God with our very own lives, We are reflecting the life of Jesus Christ who made the choice to come into this broken, messed up world and he came for one reason. Because he loves us and he values your life so much he was willing to lay down his very own life for yours and mine. And that love is so strong that it has the ability to heal and to restore and to save lives. And so when you love people around you in the similar fashion that Christ has loved you, you are then more able to make these sacrifices that are being called upon you at this very moment. And the love that you experience helps you make it through one more day, one more week. Because God loves us, God is coming towards us. And God will save us and our lives will return eventually to a time where there will be singing and dancing and being in crowds that are cheering. And we will be enjoying the abundant life that God has promised us. It's not here yet, but I believe in a God who can and will make this possible. I believe that just like the Israelites, God will turn our mourning into joy. God will exchange our sorrow for rejoicing. And so during a Christmas and New Year's season, unlike any other, I am especially reminded that we are called to trust in a God who has already and will again come to us and find a way to make his promises a living reality. Hope is on the way, because help is on the way. Amen. Let us pray. Alpha and Omega, we come to you at the beginning of another year. We pray that you would give us wisdom from your truth. Fill us with a desire to faithfully follow after you, more than any other thing that tempts us. We thank you that you are far greater than whatever we may face in the days ahead. We thank you that your presence goes with us and that your joy is never dependent on our circumstances or actions. 
for you are our true and lasting strength. We ask for your peace to lead us and for your grace and goodness to cover our lives this day. Let your spirit and power breathe in us and through us again, fresh and new. Today we remember those who are lost and scattered, wandering without direction or hope. Gather them into your flock and fold. Put a new song of praise upon their lips. We gather those, we remember those who are hungry and thirsty, languishing because of what they lack. Satisfy their needs through your abundant love. Lead them to springs of water that never fail. We remember those who are sick and suffering, held in the grip of illness and pain. In particular, we pray for all those who are sick with COVID-19, as well as our doctors and nurses and staff in our hospitals. We pray that you would set them free from their afflictions and heal them and renew their strength. And so we take the time now to silently remember all the lives that have been lost over this past year because of this pandemic. We remember those who are sad and grieving, unable to laugh or dance and sing at this moment. Give them the peace that can never perish and the joy that can never be taken away. Come and redeem your people, Lord, so that we may rejoice in your goodness and be radiant in your presence and sing songs of thanks and praise to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We enter into a time of offering. As we enter into a, another year, I want to hope and pray that you have the um, envelopes that Bill has provided for our members. If you have not yet, please reach out to him at this time. But I want to, in, in particular, thank you for your generosity over this past year. The most of this year... We couldn't pass the offering plate in our sanctuary like we normally do, yet in the midst of that, you continue to find ways to give and to be generous and to support the life of our church and the ministries that we are connected with. And so we have made it through another year, and because of your generosity and God's grace, we remain a financially healthy congregation. And so as we move into another year, I would encourage you to continue to support this church either by mailing in those envelopes to 2020 Brunswick Avenue, Lawrence, New Jersey 08648 or simply go to our website, find the link for online giving at slackwoodchurch.org and you can give there. Let's bow our heads and pray for the gifts that are bringing forward on this week. God, we bring you these gifts for what we have first received from you. Use them, we pray, to enable the ministries of this church to flourish as we come together to serve our neighbors, both near and far away, and by showing love and mercy as you have shown us. Amen. Thank you. 
On the second Sunday of Christmas, we celebrate Jesus coming to us. Not out of obligation, but out of love. We believe that whenever we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, Christ is present with us. And so the divine becomes manifest. And in the midst of whatever we are, we remember not only the beginning of Jesus' life, but also the end. On that night before Jesus' crucifixion, where he took a piece of bread and after, after giving thanks to it, he broke it. And he said to his disciples, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death and resurrection of the risen and reigning Lord until he comes again. And so with thanksgiving, let us offer forward our grateful praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give thanks and praise God of majesty and splendor. By your power you have created all that there is. Making the universe out of chaos and ruling over all things in love. Throughout the ages, you have called your people to love and serve you, and to be your light among the nations. Whenever we have failed you, you have not failed us, but you have sent prophets to call us back to your ways. And so we praise you that in the fullness of time, you revealed your love by sending your son Jesus to be the light of the world. He came to heal our brokenness and to set before us the ways of justice and peace. By your Holy Spirit, unite us in love, of which you are the source, and that we may be one in ministry in every time and place. And now we pray together the prayer you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We encourage you wherever you are, to find a piece of bread that is available to you or some form of juice. And so what we will do is we will partake of the elements one at a time and we will do it at the same time, beginning with the bread. Know that everyone is welcome to join us at the Lord's table. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, from the east to the west, to the north to the south, 
You have gathered us together at your table. You have called us to be your beloved, and you have fed us with your very own body. We pray that you would transform us to be your body for this world, and that this would fortify us through your Holy Spirit, that we may make it through another week serving you and loving our neighbor and doing so with great joy. Amen. I hope that today's worship service is an opportunity for you to receive the good news, the hope that we have that doesn't come from us or what we can do or accomplish. God's calling us to stay put, to keep doing what we've been doing, as monotonous as that may be. But our hope comes from God that during this Christmas season, we are reminded it comes to us and that does deliver us and does redeem us and is able to save us in ways that we can't even imagine. Now hear this benediction. May the God that goes before us show us the way. May the God that is behind us give us encouragement. May the God that is above us protect us. May the God that is below us lift us up in the midst of our sorrows. And may the God that dwells within us provide us with faith, hope, and love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.